Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to find out what one strategy will be, at least. The big matchup just hours away, as Christine's been saying. The first debate in the critical early voting state of New Hampshire. And Congressman Ron Paul is yes. trying to build on what he accomplished in 2008. His campaign took on a life of its own on the web, surprised a lot of the pundits and experts. Joining us now from Texas, 2012 presidential candidate Congressman Ron Paul, who will be participating in tonight's New Hampshire debate. Congressman, great to have you with us, as always. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. I want to take a look at the latest CNN poll. It actually just released about 90 minutes ago. When we take a look at the field of GOP contenders, you come in sixth place uh, with just about 7% of the vote. And this is your third time running. What are you looking to do in tonight's debate to win over more voters? Well, sometimes I question some of these polls, <laughs> but, but that's a different story. But no, I, I don't change strategy. I just keep uh, doing the same thing, and it's always been building. Uh, certainly, there was an explosion of interest in what I've been doing for 30 years, uh, four years ago in the last campaign, and it's continued. The momentum has continued. So uh, I think I just have to continue to do what I'm doing and have been doing because the country has finally uh, awakened and found out that what we've been doing is wrong. And I've been warning people about the deficit, warning about the stupid foreign policy and the wars that we continue to fight, the silliness of printing money when we need it. And people are starting to wake up and they say, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. And this is what I've been talking about for a long time. So I would say I'm not adapting to uh, the status quo as much as challenging the status quo. And the status quo right now is moving in my direction, is moving rapidly. So uh, our campaign is pretty optimistic about what's happening. Right. I mean, you know, and you bring up the, the, the point in a lot of ways, it really should be your time because these issues that you've talked about. And I remember interviewing you back in 2008 about cutting spending, cutting the debt, shrinking government really are front and center now. Then again, there are some other views like isolationism that could potentially keep you from being a mainstream Republican candidate. So do you really think um, that there's a, a path to victory for you, even though some of your uh, some of your stances are a little bit controversial? Well, they certainly are try to be made controversial by the media who always wants to use the word isolationism because that is not what I'm talking about. If anybody studied what I'm doing, we'll know that you can't use that word. I talk about non-intervention. I'm a free trader. I don't want closed borders. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that there's a big difference between not aggressively starting wars versus isolationism. Isolationism is closing ourselves off from the world. And I want, I want to take the advice of the founders and follow the Constitution. That is, get along with other countries, promote trade, and promote travel. That's what we need to do. So it's the last thing in the world from isolationism. And besides, it's right, very well, traditional, you, you, it's very taking, American, and it's very... No, I was just saying, ahead. if you're taking issue with the, um, if, with the term, let's lose the term. Let's just talk a little bit about some of the uh, positions that you've talked about. Um, a pullout from Afghanistan at a faster pace, uh, Iraq. What about Libya, Yemen, some of these other countries where we are now involved in, whether it's a ma major uh, show of ground troops, no, but at least some sort of uh, military intervention, be it uh, drones or uh, special operations forces. What would be your stances on some of those? Well, what, what it's been for a long time, just come home and quit that. And the majority of American people are saying that. They're sick and tired of a 10-year war. And now that Bin Laden's killed, especially now, just come home. Uh, I mean, the, f the foolishness of going into Iraq and now under U.N. orders and no permission from the Congress going into Libya, starting another battle in Yemen, in Somalia, Pakistan, Iraq, Afghanistan. We can't afford it. I mean, the people know it. They're sick and tired of it. So I don't think this is strange at all. I think I am mainstream America right now on this foreign policy. You also said that you would that there's no authority in the Constitution for FEMA. So after some of the disasters that we've seen this year, I mean, technically, the government wouldn't be there to help people in their neediest hour. Yeah, well, they don't do a very good job. FEMA has a bad reputation. Uh, I live on the coast, and I've taken a very strong stand against the problems that FEMA causes. And believe me, we got tons of calls when the hurricanes hit because FEMA gets in the way and they take over. They're very costly. 
FEMA and that whole concept of insuring people by, with other taxpayers' money to go and deliberately build in dangerous places. I mean, it is is so anti-economic to encourage people to do the things that the marketplace wouldn't allow them to do. But uh, just think of uh, the recovery effort uh, with the major hurricanes in the last several years. It doesn't have a very good record. And uh, no, it isn't in the Constitution. When, when did we get into the insurance business? I mean, it's not there. How do you, and well, since I mean, they do such imagine, a lousy okay. job. And FEMA, let me, let me finish. And FEMA is also about $18 billion in debt. So it's not a very successful organization. Um, taking the challenges, perhaps, of the organization itself aside, could you see yourself as President Ron Paul standing there saying, I'm so sorry that your entire town of, let's say, Joplin, Missouri is wiped away, but the federal government really can't do anything for you? Well, I, I think following the law, and I, I think that's a little bit presumptuous on, on forming a question like that. No, we try to make things work, but uh, the whole thing is if, if they paid into and as part of the system. But long term and philosophically, it's not a good idea. There's, but so much of what we do in Washington is not a good idea, but you try to make it work the best you can. And maybe somebody like myself, who's a strict fiscal conservative, uh, might be able to manage some of these things a little bit better until we decide that it is not the proper role of government. Now, it, it is in this stuff, uh, you know, like, oh, you're not for the welfare state, so you don't care about poor people, you don't care about medical care. It, it's such a, uh, uh, you, you know, ch challenge is just uh, don't make it, that doesn't make any sense. All right, well, I know you're uh, gearing up for the debate tonight. It was great to get some of your uh, thoughts this morning. Congressman Ron Paul, 2012 presidential candidate from Clute, Texas this morning, uh, will be watching you tonight. So thanks so much for joining us. Okay. And of course, we have uh, the first major debate of the election live for you tonight, beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on CNN.